What's up, guys? This is Alex from XTrades back to you with another weekly trade ideas list. Hope everybody had a wonderful trading week and a great weekend. Um, we had an amazing week last week. So had, had some great call setups on the market and um, in our video as well. We had a uh, FDX, which had a really nice break and retest trade. There was WBA, which is Walgreens, broke out of the downtrend line, got some nice upside, and also Walmart, which reversed off uh, the bottom of demand pretty well. So if you want, go back and uh, look at the three setups and see if you can find some educational value out of that. I feel like those setups were pretty nice and um, really good for longs. And it wasn't too late to enter on either of them. I feel like they gave they gave you a chance to enter at a decent price. You, you know, you didn't overpay or anything. And uh, there was minimal drawdown even on some of them. So pretty, uh, pretty nice setups. Hopefully we have some pretty good setups this week too. This time, this week though, I do only have three setups and the reason why because I didn't really see anything out of my list of 200 plus names. So look, I go through 220 tickers every Sunday. Go through this list right here. You can see 221. I go through that whole list. Um, takes me about an hour or two. And then I pretty much break it down into setups and I see what I like best, right? Well, this week I see a lot of overextension on the market. Um, people are chasing it, you know, they're pretty much, you know, just chasing the trend, right? But a, a lot of things are looking a little overbought to me. so. Um, really doesn't appeal to me too much on the long side, but as well, we do have uh, big tech earnings coming up. So we have even more. Uh, last week we had Microsoft and Tesla. This week we have Meta, which is originally Facebook. We got Amazon, we got Apple, we got Google. So, I mean, we just got a crazy lineup this week, as well as we have the FOMC meeting. So Jerome Powell is gonna be speaking and doing a press conference on Wednesday at about 2.30. Uh, for Monday, you can see um, we have no economic data scheduled, so you won't really see any crazy pre-market movement, I don't think, from uh, econ data. Tuesday, not really seeing anything crazy either. That's really that market moving. Wednesday on Fed day, we do have uh, the PMI, we do have ISA manufacturing, but then you can see uh, Fed, Fed Chair Jerome Powell does have the news conference 2.30. Uh, Thursday, we have initial jobless claims. That could give a good insight to the labor market. And then Friday, another big one. So non-farm payrolls, which is, I mean, a pretty, pretty crazy movement, to be honest. Pretty much every time the non-farms comes out, I mean, there's just insane volatility, uh, especially in 2022. So we'll have to see how that goes. So yeah, that's um, that's for economic data and pretty much what what the Fed is going to be doing on Wednesday for earnings. Uh, some notable names here: uh, we got Exxon, Big Oil, you got Pfizer, AMD, McDonald's, UPS, Caterpillar. Uh, you got Meta, you got uh, Sony, we got Waste Management, we got Google, we got Apple, Eli Lilly, Bristol Myers, we got Amazon, Shell, Starbucks, Qcom. Gilead Sciences. What we got on Friday? Not really seeing anything that sticks out to me Friday. But I mean, you can just see just um, another fi uh, earnings filled week that can definitely move markets. Most importantly, the FOMC meeting is coming. So make sure you trade safe. I'm not going to be swing trading anything into FOMC. Um, I'm going to be doing strictly day trades this week, which is also why you see a limited watch list this week. And we only have three tickers to go over. So this could be a quick video, but either way, we're still going to cover the indexes like we do we'll over the SPY, QQQ, IWM, the VIX. DXY, all that good stuff. So our first setup here, we're looking at Boyle. So this is a ETF, I'm guessing tied to natural gas. If you're paying attention to natural gas, you know, it's just been getting slammed. Minus the fact that, um, minus the fact that the MACD is positive, this has been uh, diverging from that and still going down regardless. But now we're seeing an increase in volume on the daily. MACD is still positive. So I'm wondering if maybe we could get a technical rebalance to the upside. So for Boyle here, I'm gonna be looking at calls. Maybe for a move up to supply. Keep in mind, you wouldn't be in this very long if you plan on not swinging through FOMC. FOMC is Wednesday. So if you enter something on Monday, you know, you might be de-risking by Wednesday. If you're de-risking by Wednesday, it's because you want to avoid that risk holding into the FOMC meeting. Another good thing about maybe cutting before then, because I uh, implied volatility on options is going to drop off as soon as, um, you know, as soon as the news is pretty much out of the way. People are not anticipating such a big move anymore. Uh, implied volatility does drop and that does pretty much it cuts premiums down a little bit on value so but for Boyle here you can see I mean I broke this huge 1705 weekly support um, that's pretty much as uh, this is as low as I could put it until it broke finally it broke that but now I mean on the daily it's just it's just way overdone to me 
I mean, it's just looking crazy. Um, I feel like it could get a technical rebalance to the upside. You could maybe, you know, argue that this downtrend line needs to get broken first. You do have an argument up to this trend line and uh, that supply. And what's really nice about this also is that volume to pick up really heavily on this candle, pretty much higher than all of these. So knowing that the market, knowing that it bounced pretty hard here on up volume and uh, closed pretty much closed higher than it opened, it could indicate that there was some buying going on on this day uh, in large mass. Looking at there was a 70 million uh, volume print that day. So it could be worth the watch. Looking at calls on Boyle. Next, going into DAL, so this is Delta Airlines. You can see we are pulling up into supply rejected off supply. I really like this one to the downside. So I'll be looking at puts on this. You can see it maybe a move down to the support. You know, it's about, you know, 37 bucks. Uh, it's also this previous resistance. So this previous resistance could act as new support. Once it, I mean, you can see it here, got over, broke out, came back down, retested, did make support um, on this level on earnings. So pretty valid support. Um, but you can see, I mean, it's starting to kind of top out a little bit here at supply. So I really like this to the downside. Um, and like I said, I'm probably not going to be looking at swing trades this week. Usually when I'm showing these to you guys, I'm showing you that it has potential for a day trade and for a swing trade. But this week with all the events going on and all the overnight risk, I really wouldn't swing trade past Wednesday this week. You know, maybe wait for the FOMC, wait for the earnings to come out, let it trend form, and then you can enter some new swing trades. I didn't even alert any new swing trades inside the discord or anything uh, i stuck to all day trades and even my day trade alerts were kind of limited this week because i'm really just kind of waiting uh so we'll have to see but yeah so dal looks good here at supply uh looks for good looks good for a move back down to the 37s you could even be more conservative than that if you're day trading obviously it's not going to get down to 37 in a day very unlikely without a market moving event next we're going into xle so this is energy pretty similar um to the last one it did react to this supply so this is a rally based drop supply zone finally came up and tested it you know cvx announced their share buyback they had pretty good earnings and then you know did end up selling off uh you know a day or two after you know probably just people de-risking energy because they you know they're buying up tech and other beat down tech stocks you know to get caught up with the market um after such a just a crazy rally i mean to be honest it, the market's just going nuts um, you could even argue it feels like, you know, that 2020 to 2021 bounce just by like the panic buying and people are just ready to get caught back up after such a shitty year last year. So, yeah, so we're looking at exit lead here. You can see some de-risking in uh, energy. So this is a relative weakness play. So relative strength and relative weakness, obviously, when you have the, the bra market up and something is down, that would be relative weakness. If you have something up while the bra market is down, that would be relative strength. So this would be a relative weakness play because the market was up pretty nice. You know, spy closed green, exitly down two. Relative, you know, relative weakness. This could be showing early rotation out of energy into tech names, which also validates our bear thesis. So um, even if it's just short terms, could give a you know a nice little day trade or even a couple day swing trade. You know, back down to supports, and your next support would be 87.79. This pivot right here or this Fibonacci level, uh, the 87.35. You can see it bounced off the 61.8. Uh, that's also a strong support. And that just comes from this retracement diagram here. So it comes from this high down to that low. Those are the Fibonacci levels. And you can see how strong the 61.8 was. And that's why they call it the golden ratio. Um, you probably heard it in other, you know, in other communities, or you probably heard it in our Discord, uh, all about the Fibonacci golden, golden ratio. That is the 61.8 level, and it is the most sought after Fibonacci ratio. So it's a little fun fact. So yeah, Boyle, looking at calls, oversold technical rebounds to the upside, hoping for that. DAL, we're looking for puts at supply, starting to top out a little bit. AZLE, also looking at puts, uh, topping out of supply, rally based drop supply zone, relative weakness compared to the market close on Friday. So that's our three setups. Uh, sticking to day trades this week, and more than likely won't be getting in any swing trades until after FOMC and you know after Amazon and Apple release their earnings so we'll have to see and once I do I will you know alert it and let you know what position I got into in the discord so and you might even hear about new positions next week on the next video even if you're not in the discord so just keep an eye out you know tune into the next one too you know 
you might hear a little hint. I had a video, you know, a couple of weeks ago. I, I said that I was in spy puts. You could have acted on that. You know, we had a pretty brutal sell off like two days later after that. Made a nice 50% profit on the puts and got right out and it rallied right after. So perfect timing. Uh, it's, sometimes it's like that. Sometimes you get out right in time. So onto the indexes. This is the SPY S&P 500. And you can see um, pretty much pulling right into supply, which I really don't like for longs. So I'm not going to be looking at calls on SPY uh, for a, you know swing trade wise because I have to see it get over the supply first, you know, go long the SPY and feel confident about it. Day trade wise, I mean, it doesn't really matter. You know, if the Camarilla pivots are looking good intraday, you can scalp calls off the bottom or, you know, you can wait for a dip and scalp those. I mean, it's pretty much been buy the dip mode all freaking week. So past two weeks, even almost three weeks, just been buy the dip, buy the dip, minus these two days where we you know we did catch the puts on Thank God, because uh, I mean, it just totally ripped right after and we would have gave up all the profits. Levels of focus this week, uh, we got this major, what is that, rally base drop supply. You can see uh, one rejection, two. This would be the third rejection if it does decide to come up. So really be careful here. Be careful with longs because you never know how it's going to react to supply. If you really wanted to wait, you can wait for it to get over supply. That would be good, which also coincides with 41049, which is this here, um, same area just a regular resistance. So supply, regular resistance. You got a supply candle, regular resistance. Another level of focus, you got this 402.65. I feel like it'd be really important to stay over. Um, it's this little breakout spot right here. You can see where I circled. Um, you'd want it to you know, make support here. Um, if not, and it wanted to break down that, it could flush back down to the 200 EMA, which puts you at you know 400 flat to you know upper 399s. If it decided to get under the 200 EMA um, and go back within the trend line, the longer term trend line, that would put you at the 50 and that would put you at lower 390s. So it's important that that 402.65 holds to not hit the lower, you know, the lower 400s and the upper 399s. And it's also important to hold the 200 EMA to not take you to the lower 390s. So those are your levels of focus, just that 200 and the 50 and this 402.65, you definitely want it holding over. Um, no position for me on this. You could maybe argue that you could, you know, take this little free space back up the supply if the bulls are on your side. If it decides to start selling a supply, that gives you, you know, a really good argument to take puts at supply. And you can start scalping puts off this area just like um, the IWM. You know, that supply zone is, you know, rejected four, five, six times. And it gave great scalps, great, you know, couple day swing trades for you know, people are trying to make quick buck off the supply. So, so one thing that's different about the SPY uh, cash session levels compared to the futures is that this is giving you different candle data. So this does look like a confirmed one week breakout. You got the one week candle closing outside of the downtrend line, but then let's pull up the ES futures where it might show you something just a little bit different. So we pull up the ES futures here. Uh, this is one trend line I would be careful of. You got test one, test two, test number three. You can see we did get a reaction. As soon as it tapped this on Friday, I mean, just crazy selling. Um, pretty nice candle. It's about a half a percent sell off in an hour. And now starting to follow through on the futures overnight session here going into Monday. So that trend line worth watching. It's like as soon as one longer term trend line kind of becomes a little irrelevant, something new pops up. Uh, out of nowhere and that's this right here this comes from august and december so those are your two points that leads to your third point acting as resistance and this would be a confirmed downtrend line um if we keep seeing you know resistance and rejection here so my original point comparing the spy here looks like a confirmed breakout if we go to the es it's much tighter you could even argue that this is not great confirmation yet and we put on the same two points so you got point one point two just like you saw me add Point 0.1, point 0.2, and look at that. I mean, it's just, it's not as confirmed as the SPY, and that's because it's giving you different data on the candles. You have more, um, you have more traded prices and more range on the futures because they're open 24 seven. So you may see something on the futures that you're not gonna see on the SPY. And that's kind of giving me a little bit of concern that maybe this downtrend line is really not out of the water yet on the longer term basis, because this is all the way from all time highs to current and even, uh, with the short term, you saw what I had there. You go from August to December, and look at that. You do you do have a third uh, third trend line test rejection uh, that's acting as clear resistance short term. So that could be a, some, another cause for concern. 
that maybe this is just a sucker's rally. So you have to be very nimble here because you really don't have the greatest confirmation. You have a huge event coming up. You have huge big tech earnings coming up. I mean, nothing here is screaming, you know, buy, buy, buy instantly. Um, that's just my opinion. I could just be a skeptic. I'm even a skeptic in everything I enter. If I enter something, I'm, you know, thinking about the other side of it, how it could go, because I know the market can humble me in two seconds. So you just have to stay subjective, be a skeptic, you know, don't be a sucker. So always just respect your opponent, right? Uh, if you're entering something, you know, respect the other side of it because you never know what's going to pop up. So yeah, that's the SPY. You saw my outlook on the SPY and also the ES and how they differ a little bit and how that could be giving a little bit more conflicting information. So just make sure you're careful on that. No position for me. Maybe wait for it to get up in the supply like we covered. If you don't know, that supply was just, you know, right here. So, it, I mean, it's right there. So, I mean, that's it's scary because you, you don't want to enter calls here. And at the same time, um, I mean, the VIX is so damn low that you might not even want to, you know, get puts yet. Even though the VIX low is giving you a discount for cheap puts, you know, it just may not be time yet. So maybe wait for the event to get over. Next, we're going into the QQQ. So this one's a little bit cleaner. You can see you got the one week candle breakout. So even if we went to the NASDAQ, much cleaner on the futures, uh, you do have a confirmed one week candle breaking out of this downtrend line on the futures. So a little bit different than ES, this looks much better to be honest. And that, that could be the reason why uh, you can see tech rallying a little bit harder than uh, the SPY. Another cool thing about this is that uh, it double bottomed off the 61.8% uh, retracement, the golden ratio like I covered. So you can see this is uh, from low to high. This is uh, from 2020 lows uh, when COVID bottomed. And then we have uh, our all time high. And you can see, I mean, all fibs acted pretty nicely as support at one point. You got to bounce off 38.2, bounce off 50, and a little small bounce off 61.8, where this is, you know, starting to try to make a bottom or attempt to at least. But either way, NASDAQ is breaking out here. It looks pretty decent. And you do have that confirmation on the futures as well. One bad thing for the short term traders, and this is not considering the long term trend line break at all, uh, you do have the short term resistance you have to get over. So you got 296.88 to worry about, uh, which is my pretty much my main price target. I said if, you know, if QQQ could break out, I said it could, you know, put us as high as 296.88. And that also coincides with the 200 EMA here now. So we'll, we'll need to see more here. We do have an argument for the bears that could see some resistance here. I mean, I personally, I don't want to open calls up here. I need to see more. Um, I need to wait for the FOMC, you know, just to be safe. So if you really want it, though, I mean, calls, you know, 60, 90 days out, that's not going to get affected by the, you know, by the event volatility as much as if you were to, you know, just trade like a weekly call or something and swing it overnight, which is not my recommendation at all on a week like this. So yeah, 296.88 man resistance. If it does reject, that could put you as low as this breakout point at 290 flat or 290.21, which is this little peak right here. And that's pretty much your chop range. You would, you know, need to get under that 290 to go lower or it needs to get over that 296.88 to go higher. Right now, it is in the bull's favor. You have the breakout, uh, you have a low VIX. SPY is kind of conflicting because it's got that downtrend line, but you saw the NASDAQ futures. It did look a little bit more favorable on the breakout. Let's even go back to the NASDAQ futures here. I want to see if we could find a similar resistance how we saw August to December, like we went over on the futures and see if there's a similar resistance there um, as on the ES futures that we were just looking at. So we got the August peak down to this December high. You can see it, it did break out. So it's not seeing resistance yet, only seeing resistance at the 200 EMA, which makes total sense. And also, you know, similar to what we see on QQQ there at 296, at 296 is it's starting to see resistance at the CPI peak right here as well on the futures. So yeah, that's where, that's where the SPY and QQQ are differing. Uh, the NASDAQ futures are breaking out of the long-term trend line and breaking out of the short-term trend line. ES and looking a little bit more conflicting, um, seeing resistance at the short-term line and also not getting that huge one-week breakout candle that we saw on the NASDAQ. So just be careful with that. First buy. Otherwise, QQQ looks decent. I mean, the only argument you have uh, is that it needs to clear that resistance and also stay over 292. Next, going into the IWM. So this one did indeed get oversupply very briefly. Um, you can see that the cup and handle or the inverse head and shoulders, whatever you want to call it, they're both bullish. The one thing I don't like about this is that it closed under the resistance. So it wasn't able to close over, 
which is really, I mean, it's not confirming that you should go long yet. Cause usually on a cup and handle or inverse head and shoulders, you go long as soon as the neckline breaks. Uh, the neckline is obviously the resistance. So we need to see it getting over 189.86. Once it gets over that and it's holding over really well, that's an easy long up to 193. So if you see that next week and it can run up into, you know, into Wednesday in the FOMC meeting, that might give you a pretty decent trade from 189.86 up to 193s at this supply. And that's a drop base drop supply zone, which is a really nasty one, by the way. So that's as, that's as high as I can put you for that. Only if it can get over that resistance. If you start seeing selling, cash open Monday and you have other indicators, you know, rising dollar, high VIX, this is a really good spot to take puts because you are still within the supply. You closed on the resi under resistance and that would give you a move, you know, maybe back down to the 200 EMA, you know, something light because I mean, volatility is still pretty low. So can't really, you know, bet on a huge dip yet. Just do off the fact that, you know, the VIX is low. There's also the event coming up. So, I mean, not a lot of people are just going to go crazy de-risking yet. I don't think, it, you know, we could just chop. So don't expect any huge moves up or down, to be honest. But at the same time, you know, this is giving you an opportunity in either direction if it wants to get over 189.86 or if it wants to reject that area. So yeah, the overall picture on IWM looking bullish. You got an inverse head and shoulders or a cup and handle, whatever you want to call it. Break of the neckline, easy trade up to 193 at least. If it wants to stand or 189.86, you get a nice, you know, trade back down to the 200 EMA just off the supply rejection for puts. Next. We're going into the VIX. Just a brutal sell off all week for the VIX, but it did hold our 18 flat, which is pretty much our main focus. I said if you want to see a crazy, crazy rally, it would need to get under 18, obviously. And it wasn't really able to do that. The market still rallied pretty good, but I mean, it could have been better if the VIX did, you know, just straight up die and go under 18 and start filling down to the 16s, which I mean, could happen this week post, you know, FOMC. So we'll have to see. Um, but either way, same levels as last week holding 18s and also i mean it literally just went back into the downtrend line that we covered as well so um nothing really changed here for the vix pretty much the same thing it needs to get under 18 to go higher for stocks bears you definitely want to see it bottom here at 18 and get back over 20 same thing i mean you bears need it over 20 and need to see more fear coming into the market before you know assuming that they're gonna get a huge dip free space here is still the same 18 under 18 would take you to 1634 which is this low right here and then obviously the 18 just comes from this recent low here and this is pretty much the lowest the vix has been in over a year so just option option premiums are just crazy cheap right now 30 days out so the vix just covers pretty much it's giving you a reading on implied volatility about 30 days out via spx options calls and puts it's pretty much calculated from out of the money SPX calls and puts, along with other complicated math equations, I'm sure that make up, you know, the VIX and how it's calculated. And we'll go into the data here. So this is the VIX 2022 to 2023 average close. Um, I pretty much track every single close on the day for the last, um, since 2022 started. So, you know, January 3rd, 2022 up to now. That's giving us a reading of 2532. So that's our average at the moment, still way below the median here. Um, and it's gonna have a mean regression. So volatility is gonna come back and test this eventually. Uh, personally, I feel like it could be soon. Just off the fact that, you know, we've been hanging below these averages for a good little minute now. And it's extremely cheap to hedge right now. We are just, you know, just coming off of lows and technically we're, you know, we could still be in a bear market um, overall. So you just have to be really careful with that. Money managers, Wall Street, they're going to want to hedge those gains uh, pretty soon here. And we might start seeing flows of options coming massively into put premiums. So just keep an eye on that. And I really do expect this median price target to hit again soon which it did i mean in 2022 multiple times it bounced off lows hit the median uh it rejected off highs hit the median it always comes back to the median there's always a meme regression and even if you don't use the 2022 to 2023 average close or really any average close you can use your regular moving averages so you got your 50 and 200 here those work as well so uh 50 is obviously going to be your more medium term and then the 200 is going to be more of like a long-term average. Next, we're going into the DXY, which is basically unchanged from what we covered. Uh, still holding that 101.29, you know, that base. So the same thing as last week, it, it needs to get over that. It needs to get over that 2020 COVID peak with the monthly candle close, which I mean, at this rate, I highly doubt it's going to happen. I mean, to me, I mean, this, this could be pretty bullish. 
uh, for stocks, assuming that it doesn't want to hold this base, the short term base. This COVID peak, though, um, if it's staying under that, you know, pretty well, I mean, bulls have a pretty good case that the dollar's dying. Um, that could be good, but either way, still holding that 101.29 base. You know, if you're bullish on stocks, you need it to get under that 101.29, or you just need it to keep chopping like it has been. Uh, even if the dollar's just chilling out, that's good as well. Uh, it doesn't have to just straight up die, you know, to see stocks rally. And it also doesn't have to, you know, just straight shoot up, you know, to see, see stocks get a pullback. But um, obviously, you know, the, the currency volatility is going to play a big role in, you know, how equities move. So we do want to see it do something here. Um, I, I personally do, at least. So this 101.29 base, if you're bearish on stocks, you need it to hold here. Reclaim over the 2020 COVID peak that we've been covering. Really want to see it get back over 103s. Once it gets over 103s and, you know, you start seeing violent pops on it, that, that could be a, a good hint of volatility coming back. But otherwise, unchanged from last week, I really don't see anything new here. I know for a fact on the FOMC, it's, it's that's going to move the dollar crazy. It's going to move the dollar bonds, everything. So make sure you trade safe, especially don't be swinging those short term contracts and gambling and stuff unless you're you know keeping your size down it's just it's not worth it when we have this huge event coming up you know save your energy save your capital you know it could be worth it especially if you wait you know for the, the news to come out the event to get out of the way let a little trend establish so you so you know you can feel confident about what you're getting into and hold it for multiple days but otherwise maybe you just stick to day trades Keep your risk low and especially pay attention and don't get caught in traps. So yeah, that's our video today. I love you guys. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to our x -Trades YouTube channel. I'm going to go get this chopped up, edited, all that good stuff. Make sure you go to the Options Watchlist channel. I do have a written report, which is just a quick summary of what we went over for the three setups. Or the usually we go over five setups. This week we're only going over three. But I do cover that in a written weekly report. If you just want a quick read and you don't have time to watch the videos all the time, you can just go there and see if I'm watching calls or puts. Maybe I'll throw in a price target or something like that. But I do just put these out so you guys can you know, pick which one looks best to you. you may or may not take that risk. It's okay. It's not like a suggestion or a, me trying to get you to FOMO into anything. It's really just an idea. Maybe help step your game up a little bit. So, so yeah, I love you guys. Make sure you tune into the next one and peace out.